WCTN WTJR presents Friends of Wild Olive Branch Ministries with Kyle Kopp and David Vance, serving the Yeshua. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And now, today's message. Welcome in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Son of God. I'm Kyle Kopp, here with David Vance, and we are the Friends of the Wild Olive Branch Ministries. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, brother. Yes, sir. New Year's coming. Pretty quick. We're about ready to go from 15 to 16. Yay, yay. Yay, yay. <laughs> I'll bet you're just going to go out and party down, aren't you? Yeah, I may go to, may stay up till 1030. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, I can honestly say I've never seen the fascination with all the hoopla. I, it's great. We're celebrating a new year, okay? But I don't have to stay up to midnight to do it. I can say the next day, hey, happy new year. <laughs> well, we ought to do it in September, you know, right? Um, uh, the Jewish New Year. Oh, is that when the Jewish New yeah, Year is? Yeah, it's because it's lunar, and oh. that's when it happens. I didn't realize that. <clears throat> yep. So they entered the there. Rosh Hashanah. Okay. Oh, I wonder who established. Yeah, don't, we don't want to get started on all that. Who started the New Year and why it is now and why it's not the Jewish one. But listen, everybody, sincerely, you know, as we close <clears throat> down 2015, my brother and I, just want to say to all of you that we appreciate very much your faithfulness to our show, very much your faithfulness to WTJR here in Quincy. It is a blessing to be a blessing to all of you. And yes, we are entering into a new year with new horizons, and it is our prayer that you do nothing more than continue to seek your Heavenly Father through the blood and the power and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ with the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in other tongues because ultimately all that matters when you come down to it, the end of 15, the beginning of 16 is serving Him and Him alone Amen. and spending eternity with Him in heaven forever. We just want to remind you all that we love you and that we just want you blessed in every way coming into this new year. And we just, just want to take a minute to tell you that. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the listening audience of WTJR, for every person that comes within the sounds of our voice. We pray a special blessing upon each and every one. We pray, Father God, that you would reveal yourself to them, that you would use us as your instruments to bring forth revelation knowledge that would speak into their lives and change their lives, Lord God, by your word, by your power, grace, mercy, love, all the things that you are, Heavenly Father. Father God, we thank you for WTJR, for all the management staff here, that you continue to bless them, to keep them, to strengthen them and encourage them. Pray, Lord God, that they would serve you always with all their hearts. Lord. We thank you for our country, the United States of America. And as we enter into a new year, Father God, we declare a new beginning for this country, the United States of America. We pray, Father God, that, this, that we would humble ourselves and we would repent and turn from, our, from the evil ways and that we would call upon you, the Lord Jesus Christ, repent and go forward as a country, Lord God. We thank you for the men and the women in the field, that they are kept that they are strengthened, but most of all, that they surrender their lives to you and be obedient unto your call and listen to your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let me tell you, brother, I don't want to call it the spin cycle because that's not appropriate because my wife and I use the word spin cycle sometimes in some of our circles with some of our friends that just appear to be losing their mind. So I'm going to say that the teaching you've been bringing forward has challenged me. Good. Okay? And uh, I just want you to continue in that vein. Let's hear more about what you have to say. And let's keep our minds focused on being obedient to the Holy Spirit and, and laying aside the traditions of men. And at some degree, at all degree, you know, it's interesting. We talked in our break about just how different translations are 
Yeah. And you've been reading out of the Jewish translation of the word, which translates much of what you've been preaching out of the New King James very differently. Yeah, well, it just not that the word law in the King James is um, just the way it's stated, it implies that the Torah is not good. Right. But the Torah is good and yeah. it will not pass away yeah. you know it it it's going to remain forever and i realize that jesus uh, said he came to fulfill the law not to destroy it those right. are the words of jesus right and law of torah well it, you know what i'm saying that but but it's the same vein it it doesn't go away right right and i realize that i'm i'm may stepped on your toes uh, that's all right god will heal him. just take it before the lord you know, I'm not, uh, it's not a personal vendetta to bash the King James Version. That's not my point. No. There's a lot of good in there. But Amen. I'm just saying from, the, from a, the Jewish perspective, which, remember, that's God's original people. Right. So, and they have, they have had this uh, memorized I mean, the rabbis had to memorize yeah. all of that word for word. Can you imagine? One bit, and they didn't get it. They weren't a rabbi. One word missing. I mean, it's, it's, but it's preserved the true word yeah. for uh, centuries. Now, there's, uh, just like the Gregorian calendar, which we're on, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we should still be on the Jewish calendar. It would make a whole lot more sense uh, than than the Gregorian. But that's what that's what it is. You know, they're not going to they're not going to change it at least yet until Jesus comes, and then who knows what will happen. Yeah, but, no kidding. But but the point is, uh, the forever we're calendar. trying to. I'm trying to uh, show you, you know, things that I've learned. I sure. mean, uh, listen, for years I, I was messed up and confused about this. You know, it bothered me why there's a law good and well, a law is a curse, you know, it didn't. But it's not the curse. The, the curse is legalism yeah. and tradition. That's the curse. Yeah, yeah. The law is still the Torah and it's still very meaningful. But the way it's implied, you can get, get the wrong um, uh, implication from that. Sure. And this all I'm trying to do is to show you so that you have revelation of what's truly going on. So let's go ahead and pick up. <clears throat> and we were in verse 7. And once again, I'm reading out of the King James Version, then out of the One New Man Bible. Which chapter? Uh, chapter 3, okay. verse 7. It says, Know ye therefore that, I'm out of the King James, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith are the same, the same are the children of Abraham. And verse 7 here, so then, you, so then you know that those who are from faith, these are the sons of Abraham. And in verse 8, and the scripture foreseeing uh, that God would justify the heathen or the unbeliever, through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. Verse 8 in the One New Man, And since the Scripture foresaw that God makes the heathens righteous by faith, <clears throat> he proclaimed in advance to Abraham the good news that all the heathens will be blessed in, in you. Now listen, in you. Now listen, one quick side, side note here. <clears throat> Just like when Jesus was feeding the 5,000 with the seven loaves and two fishes, okay? So he didn't take that seven loaves and two fishes and, and pray. He didn't do that. He blessed it. That's what made it multiply. multiply. Mm -hmm. See, the, when Jesus, when Father God, excuse me, when the Father God blessed Abraham and said he'll be the father of many nations, 
what that did, when he blessed that, then that expanded the numbers, expanded the numbers, expanded the numbers. So, all, blessing multiplies things. Yes. Yeah. So when you pray over food, you're taking food and say you're in desperate straits. And listen, it happens today. I I know for a fact, uh, Heidi Baker, uh, who has a great ministry in Mozambique, Africa. We're short on food, and it just keeps multiplying, you know, until all the children are fed. And, and you know what? She just didn't pray over that meal. She blessed that meal. Yeah. So when you bless something, expect multiplication. Amen. See, we go out and bless our fields. We right. expect multiplication. That's right. One kernel uh, won't by itself return one kernel. That's not multiplication. Correct. But multiplication is one kernel will turn into however many kernels is on the ear of corn. Right. So, and same way with beans. So, or wheat, or what any any grain. grain. So when you bless, you expect it to multiply to come out. When you pray, you expect something to happen in just that general area. Yeah. Amen. So those those two things are important together. They are. <clears throat> Uh, like I said in verse 8 there, he says, He shall be uh, proclaimed that all heathens will be blessed in you, be in, in Abraham. And verse 9, So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Verse 9, So that they are blessed because of faith with the faith of Abraham. Amen. Blessed because of faith, with the faith. Yeah. Now, verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are written under the curse. For it is, uh, for it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. All right, listen to this in verse 10. For... So many are as, excuse me, for as many as are from works of legalism, they are under the curse. What's that saying is, if you're under legalism, then you're under the curse. Yeah. <clears throat> um, for it is written that cursed is everyone who does not abide in all of those things which has been written in the scroll of the Torah, or teaching, to do them. And a reference scripture there is Deuteronomy 27, 26. But what it says is, if you don't, if you don't do what the Torah says to do, then you're under the curse. Mm -hmm. So, we need to find out what the Torah says has to say. First five books of the Bible. Yeah. Uh, and so that, that was given to Moses. All right. And, and we tend to, as a church as a whole, uh, the church, tends to forget the Old Testament, concentrate on the New Testament. Right. But essentially the Old Testament needs to be concentrated on to understand the New Testament. Right. Verse 11, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident uh, for the just shall live by faith. Verse 11 in the one new man, that no one is made righteous in God by legalism. Do you hear that? No, you, you are not made righteous in God by any legal legalism whatsoever. And legalism is not by faith, but the one who does these things will live by the means of them. <clears throat> and verse 13. Um, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And see, this is the scripture I started out with mm -hmm. a couple, mm -hmm. or last time. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for, for us. 
For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Verse 13 in the one new man. <clears throat> Messiah redeemed us from the curse of legalism. That's the curse. The curse is legalism. The curse of legalism. Messiah redeemed us from the curse of legalism when he became a curse instead of us because it has been written. Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. <clears throat> Verse 14. So that the blessing of Abraham would come to the heathens by means of Messiah Yeshua, so that we could take the promise of the Spirit through faith. The promise of what Spirit? The Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. So, uh, 15 through there th says, you know, Abraham and his seed <coughs> were promises made. Uh, well, I'll just read it. Uh, brethren, in the old uh, King James, brethren, I speak after the matter of men, uh, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, or in other words, ratified, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now, the, I'm just going to read a few verses here because it flow better together. And now to Abraham and his seed were promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as one, and to thy seed which is Christ. And this is what I, and this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. That's what a covenant is. It, it, it's, it's something given by promise. Okay. okay, let's go back up and read, starting in verse 15 out of the King James, or uh, One New Man, excuse me. Brothers, I am speaking according to man. Likewise of man, no one sets aside or adds a codicil to a will that has been made valid. See, the, the covenant, our covenant's been made valid. Yeah. And the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. It does not say, and to the seeds, as upon many, but as upon one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and to your seed. Now, who is Messiah? And I say this. When the covenant has been made valid by God, the Torah teaching coming after 430 years does not invalidate to do away with the promise. For if inheritance is from the letter of the Torah, it is no longer from a promise, but God is freely given to Abraham through a promise. Therefore, what the Torah is teaching, excuse me, what is the Torah? It was added on the account of transgressions until the seed would come for whom it had been promised since it had been dictated through angels by the hand of the mediator. And the mediator who is one who represents someone is not the one but acts on the behalf of another. But God is one. So... <clears throat> He says in verse 21 there, is the Torah contrary to the promises of God? God forbid. If the Torah teaching was given, that which was able to make alive in truth righteousness would have been from Torah teaching. But the scripture has imprisoned everything under the power of sin so that through faith in Yeshua, the promise would be given to those that believe. Folks, I want to tell you that, uh, you know, faith, in, well, <laughs> i got to read 23. And before faith came, out of the one new man, we were held in custody under tradition. 
being kept prisoner against the coming faith that was revealed, so that the Torah has become our custodial guide to the Messiah, to Messiah, so that it would have been made righteous by faith, and since faith has come, we are no longer under that custody. Now, I want to just tell you here that, you know, we need, you, you need to realize that, that the Torah, when it says it came after 430 years, that's how long the children of Israel were in Egypt. Yeah, okay. So, when, when they were released, see, they were under tradition of, of, of the Egyptians as well. And, you know, I find that pretty interesting because if you go back, just look at what happened when they, when God did take the Israelis out of the, uh, out of Egypt. What happened? What were some of the first things that happened? Moses went up to receive the Torah, the Ten Commandments and the law. <clears throat> and what happened to the people? They started partying. Yep. Making gold, they see they were still bound by tradition, tradition. Yeah. and they were afraid to come out of what was given them, you know, right. the freedom that was given to them. And as it was a result, uncharted territory, like we've talked about so many times yeah, before. Precisely, you know, they were comfortable. They were comfortable. We've got to get out of our comfort zone, even in being imprisoned. Yeah. They were comfortable. The same thing applies even to prisoners today that, that have been a long time in, 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 in incarceration. Incarcerate, yeah, they in, just didn't stay in jail. Yeah, because when they come out, they don't know how to adapt to society Yeah, because they're comfortable. Well, God was feeding them after they came out, the manna, and it wasn't very long. And they're going, yeah. yang, 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 yeah, we'd be better off. At least we had some onions back there in Egypt. Right. You know, again, trying to get back to what they were familiar with. Precisely. And comfortable with. But see how that messes with our minds? Oh, yeah. And that's why legalism will mess with your mind. It's saying, oh, we can't, we can't do away with this. this uh, see, it's, it's, it's grabbing a hold of you just like... It grabbed a hold of the Egyptians. It, it comes, Israelis it comes back to the age-old thing at some level of how we think we earn salvation. Yeah. You know, now, hey, are we laying up treasures in heaven out of our obedience to Christ and the Spirit? Yes, that's what the Word promises right. us. But that's a vast difference between doing that and saying, well, I'm going to cut myself or I'm going to do something stupid that, that, that Satan comes up with, somehow thinking that's going to earn me. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to clean the toilets at the church today. And somehow that is going to, that's going to make everything go away, make everything better. It doesn't work like that. No. You no. know, what, what our Heavenly Father is searching for is obedience to His Spirit. Right. Not, not, not these cookie, cookie cutter, let's do this, this, and this, and let's do this repeatedly from now until Jesus returns. Well, and you have to be very careful, too. I mean, you know, uh, come up, say a prayer after me, and get saved. But there's no change right. in the life. Very dangerous place. Because if there's no change, is true, has true repentance taken place? Yeah. I can't judge that. But... I, all you can do is judge them by their fruits. Right. And, and most of the time they'll slide right back into it. They'll go right back in the groove, right, right. back in the rut. Same and thing. stay in the rut and not get out of the rut. And I'm and just glad God's a righteous judge. I know. Uh, and it's, you know, now do I knock that? No. I think it's necessary to win people to Jesus. Absolutely. But they need they need to be discipled yeah, amen. Uh, correctly uh, from the correct word. Yeah. Not, not a bunch of, not a bunch of tradition men. law. Right. Yeah. Which, it has, which happens. It has to be word-based. Discipleship has to be word-based, yeah. not program-based. Right. And everybody, I've, I've sat in several different, I've been involved in several different traditional churches at some level during my Christian life. And honestly, folks, everybody's got an idea and, and, and 
and many times they run with whatever their idea is, and it might be almost polar opposite of the other one. And honestly, discipleship is receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and walking it out, reading your word, spending time in fellowship with your heavenly Father. And is that good to do with other believers? Absolutely it is. I'm not discounting that. But these have to become these. Now, this sounds like a dangerous word, and it almost sounds contrary, but it's not. You have to take authority over the flesh. And taking authority over the flesh means that you have to change thought patterns, mm. prayer patterns, uh, uh, traditions that you're used to. Maybe when you, you become saved and you've asked Jesus Christ to, to take you forward, you know, it's going to change your routine. Here's the challenge. You need to change your routine, no question. If, if you've become saved recently and you've asked Jesus Christ into your heart and, you've, and you're saying, hey, I want to be obedient to you, now it's time to learn to read your Bible. It's time to learn to pray. It's time to take, time to take quiet time before the Lord. All those things are going to be totally different than where you've been before. And you know what you're going to find, just what my brother's been talking about. And that's the fact that you're going to find yourself very easily going back to, instead of getting up at 5 o'clock and spending time with the Lord, I'm going to sleep till 6. Right. I'm going to sleep till 6.30. You know what? I know that's important, but hey, I'm saved now. You know, I'm saved now. I've got this in the bag. It, it, it's okay. It, it, you know, God just loves me regardless of how I act and what I do. And, 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 and He does. All true. But He expects us to be obedient to His Spirit. And by being obedient to his spirit and listening to his voice is going to facilitate change, which means you're going to come out of your comfort zone, which means your traditions are going to have to change. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it is right. They have to change. If they don't, you'll just find yourself right back where you started. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll incarcerate you in their own little prison. They will. If you will. They will. Uh, because you're not, you won't be truly free. Amen. You're not, you know, Jesus, the Word will set you free. That's right. You know. That's right. Um, so I, 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 I trust that you learn something here, that the law, the Torah, is good. Don't deny the Torah teaching because it's very important. It's, it's, it's very applicable and necessary. But... Don't fall in the trap of tradition and legalism. And legalism. That's right. Because it will be a snare that's extremely hard to get out of. It will. That's right. And those that are already in it, you can break free of it. That's right. Amen. So be blessed. We thank you for tuning in again. Uh, we trust that this was revealed to you in Jesus' name, His glory. Amen. Amen. You are the This week on WTJR Community Calendar. Blood Drives on Thursday, January the 7th, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. at Trinity United Methodist Church, 2330 Plank Road in Keokuk, Iowa. And also from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. at the Blood Donation Center, 3000 North 23rd Street in Quincy, Illinois. To set up an appointment, call one 800 733-2767. First Thursday prayer at the WTGR studio, 222 North 6th Street in Quincy, Illinois. On Thursday, January the 7th at 6.30 p.m. An elevator is available. Come and join us as we pray and stand in faith for our country, our children, our homes, our family, and the church. Send your church events two weeks ahead of time to WTJR TV 16, 222 North 6th Street in Quincy, Illinois. Or email TV16 at WTJR.org. On behalf of CTN and WTJR, we say Happy New Year. <laughs>